Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9, The Bigger Picture. Could Canada be getting its first ever legal brothel? Well, one group of prostitutes hope so. These unhappy hookers are challenging the world's oldest profession in court, hoping the law will allow them to take their sex trade inside legally. Our Daryl Kaninenbelt investigates. On the stroll. Hi, how are you doing? With one of Canada's veterans. Yeah, I love the job. So like, you, you I like actually, it. I like the work. This is Valerie Scott. Damn, he was, he looked okay. She's been a prostitute since the 70s. You like having sex with strangers? Strange men? I have met so many wonderful men. They're your brothers, your fathers, your physician, um, the guy who owns the local grocery store. They're your bosses. So give me an idea, Valerie, when you go to someone's house. So I call you, you come to my house. That's the only way I can do it now that's quasi-legal. And that's the problem. We should have clean, safe houses where two or three or four of us can work together and where we can hire a receptionist, pay income tax, things so like you that. So you want to operate it just like a business? Yes, because that's what it is. So is that, is, would that equ equate to a whorehouse? Is that what that is? Well, absolutely. I wouldn't put it in those terms, but I prefer the term brothel. The best little whorehouse in Texas. Hollywood's interpretation of the profession may be a bit of a stretch. There's nothing dirty going on. These gals, too, want to make their jobs safer. What does the Constitution say right now about prostitution laws? It says nothing. It says absolutely nothing. And they need this man's help, constitutional lawyer Alan Young. I'm representing women who want the option to be able to work safely in a profession that is not currently prohibited by the government. Young is heading a national court challenge of the prostitution laws. Valerie Scott and her group called SPOC, that stands for Sex Professionals of Canada, are the challengers. The problem is the law is working across purposes. If it really thinks prostitution is so injurious to the Canadian society, they should outlaw it outright. But they haven't. They've allowed it to exist, but they haven't allowed it to exist in a way that women can protect themselves. Not all women agree. Joanne McGarry is with the Catholic Civil Rights League. Her group is intervening in the challenge. The type of change that they are seeking, which would make it legal to live off the avails, completely legal to solicit and advertise freely. We don't think it's in keeping with the kind of morality that we want to approve, um, for, especially for the young. Hi, how are you doing? For Valerie Scott, well, this challenge has changed her business practice. Putting myself back to work as a sex worker. Sex work for Valerie, like many others, is advertised in newspapers and the contracts worked out indoors, away from investigative eyes. I have to do this in order to prove that the laws are dangerous and this is not the proper way to operate. So, what's wrong with this? Well, listen and watch. Some yeah, yeah but minutes. but not right now. But I, I, I just got a call from my phone. Are you around a little later? Right there. Valerie is about to commit a crime under Canada's criminal code. So what does it mean to live off the avails of prostitution? Well, here's an example that might help you understand it. I got this matchbox from Valerie with the Sex Professionals of Canada. There aren't any matches inside. There's actually a nickel inside. That's five cents that Valerie gave to me, five cents that Valerie earned here on the street. So now does that make me guilty of living off of the avails of prostitution? Well, on the back of the matchbox, it says, illegally yours, signed, Valerie Scott. Just a few weeks ago, undercover cops in Toronto posing as prostitutes busted 70 people who accepted money for sex. Some of the alleged offenses occurred in the back of taxi cabs. Simon Fraser University's professor of criminology, John Lohman. As the current law stands, it is legal to prostitute in Canada. It's legal to buy and sell sexual services but Parliament refuses to identify where that activity should occur. And what about all of those spicy ads found in big city newspapers from Toronto to Vancouver? Well, the police completely ignored all of the brothels in massage parlors and other locations that the city of Vancouver was licensing, which is the most glaring example of the hypocrisy of Canadian prostitution law. <laughs> much different overseas where working girl laws are much different. 
decriminalized in Australia and the Netherlands. In none of those countries do you see the spate of murder that we've seen here in Canada. Law enforcement achieved is simply pushing prostitution around a city like Vancouver into more and more secluded industrial areas where it's been possible for serial killers to pick them up and murder them. Mr. Picton is now in police custody and will appear in court on Monday in Port Coquitlam. BC pig farmer Robert Picton operated the Piggy Palace Good Time Society, what police would later discover to be a slaughterhouse and burial ground for hookers and drug users from Vancouver's downtown east side. Not every one of those women would have moved indoors and protected herself against the predator, but some might have and would still be alive today. Spock doesn't want the industry legalized like red light districts of Europe. There the brothels are under government control. Spock wants the industry decriminalized so they can operate their own private business. It's an inherently dangerous activity. Ruth Ross with the Christian Legal Fellowship is intervening in this landmark challenge. It opens the door to uh, sexual tourism and I believe Canada would be a target for that. But if sex is on sale, what about the internet? If it doesn't walk like a hooker, is it? Hello? This is just a phone call away. And in Canada, private communication is legal. But aren't those people on the other end of the line living off the avails? We either have to criminalize prostitution or if we leave it as it currently stands, legal, we have to decide where and under what circumstances it should occur so that we can reduce the harm. The significance of this alley is that on August 2nd, 2008, Carolyn Connolly, a woman who worked and lived in this neighborhood, was found stabbed to death in this alley. No one bothered to call the police. Her murder remains unsolved, and that was 14 and a half months ago. Is that hard for you to talk about? Yeah, it is. It really is. The money Valerie now makes on the street goes to fight her legal challenge. Until then, Valerie... But damn, he, was, he looked okay. ...works under the radar. So when you size that guy up then, so yeah. what did he look like? He, he looks like a working guy. He, um, it, his tone of voice and things were, were good. So you would get into a vehicle with him by yourself? Yeah. The interesting thing is, is he didn't, I asked him to roll down his window. He didn't want to do that. So he wanted me to get in right away. And because he knows that? He knows that he's a target to be arrested. I see. So when you size that guy up, I had about three, maybe four seconds. Like, you don't really know. 